All right, so let's uh, add folder support into the Air Game Framework. So this has been a feature that's been requested for quite a while, and uh, I just haven't gotten around to it until now. So if we look at uh, the code here, this is kind of the, the framework repository code here. Um, the two files that we need to touch are the error server file and the error client file. And uh, the way it works right now is uh, it scans through all the children of the services folder in this case or the controllers folder for the client and it checks if the child is a module script and it loads it. Okay, so by design, this means that nested uh, modules within other folders will not be captured. Now, a lot of people have again requested that they, they have subfolders so that they can organize uh, their code. And so I'm going to add that. Now, there are a, a couple of things to keep in mind here uh, as we implement this. And uh, let me bring up this window here. So when I threw in the issue here, it's been many months now, uh, there's just some things that we need to consider. So first of all, um, this should only work with folders. In other words, uh, we should not deep scan through module scripts or other type of files or other type of uh, instances, only scan down through folders. And that I think is going to help really continue to provide a uh, rigid structure. We don't want to make it too loose uh, and end up making it too confusing how it's implemented. It needs to be understandable for everyone to use and so this enforces that. Also referencing submodules should be done via dot notation. So this can, uh, basically the same way. So if we have a bunch of nested folders and then a controller, uh, you would access it like such using the controller's reference on self and then go down into each nested folder and into the controller. Now, one thing I did not reference here is if you have multiple controllers within a nested parent, um, it's not going to be very nice to have to do this every time to write, you know, come back down from the top level. So I might also want to inject a parent um, reference here, so self.parent, and then that would point to the folder above it, and then you could um, touch whatever you're in. So this get, that gets a little tricky. I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that yet, because that means that you're implicitly con uh, talking to a controller or a service or a module, um, whereas the framework currently really wants the explicit language of dot controllers dot services. And so that's not as nice. Um, so I'm not sure about that yet, but we'll see as we go on. Again, I haven't, I haven't written any code yet, so this is just kind of a working session here. So uh, let's, let's jump into it. Again, this is kind of where we are right now. If we bring up Studio, um, I'm gonna use uh, Roho to sync in these files. So I'm gonna turn it on here first. Let's get that going. And it's just uh, a blank studio instance, so I'm going to connect to it. Now I have to turn on HTTP requests. Okay, so it's connected, and uh, let's just verify our files are coming in. Okay, cool. So again, the files we're going to be really touching here are this one and this one. So those are our two primary files. Uh, again, we're not going to touch it here since we're doing this in Visual Studio Code, uh, but we're going to use Studio to test to make sure our, our changes are working. So again, if uh, we look at our code here though, so let's say we have controllers here. We want to be able to have nested folders here, like such. And then uh, the ability to have a module in here. So that's the kind of end goal, and that this module then be able to still be part of the framework, and uh, yeah. So we're going to have to change this primarily right here, loading services. We're going to start here on the server side services, 
and we'll work away from there. Once we get that working, we can expand that to controllers and then to the modules as well. So uh, again, right away, this is just scanning through one thing. So if we change this code, we could also check They can see if there's a folder. It's just complaining to me that uh, there's there's nothing here, so don't worry about that. Uh, just in terms of coding practices, this is no longer necessarily a module, so we're just going to change that to you know child. Okay, so if it's a module script, we load it as the module. If it's a folder we want to continue scanning down. And so this means that we need some sort of recursive process. And so really what we want to do is encapsulate this in a function. Okay, so I'm gonna write a local function here. And I, you know, I'll, I'll worry about uh, cleaning up this code later, making it pretty, whatever, organizing it. So let's see, local function, with all services and then we will pass the parent and actually we're going to put this back to normal and just uh, leave it down here as a reference Again, I, I would never recommend checking things in like this to your repository because you know repository already has history, so I'll, I'll remove that once I'm done. So uh, here, I'm scanning through the child and not the services folder, but the parent we pass to it. And then we have to enter it at the top level, so that would be our service services folder. Okay, so that will give us our recursion uh, deep into the folders. Uh, there's no depth limit, which is fine. Uh, there really doesn't need to be. So uh, you know, don't create an infinite number of nested children. Obviously, the hierarchy itself will limit that, so we don't have to worry about that again. Uh, so again. It will only dive deeper into folder instances, nothing else, and any module script it finds within those folders that it will load. Uh, now the one problem we still have here is that it is not uh, referencing the parent that it's in. So that means a nested folder or a nested module script would still appear to be top level when you access it, uh, and that's not what we want. So in order to do that, I need to think through how things are referenced. So we'll see from the load service, um, what we have here is we are creating a folder for each service, we are loading a module, and then right here, this is important, so when we uh, set the services, what we're doing is pretty much loading it right away um, at, into the name of the module itself. Uh, and so what that means is if we want nested modules here, uh, then what we're going to have to do is uh, change this piece right here so that we are continually chaining folders down. Now, the rest of this should be fine. I don't think we need to do anything else. Um, so really, probably what we want to do is instead of this piece of code right here, uh, aeroserver.services, this probably should come from uh, as an argument and uh, we can dynamically write this differently um, based on our parent. So let me just demonstrate that. So instead of that line of code, we do uh, services table, something like that. And then we would pass in for that, like so. And uh, down, and here, we want to have the same parameter. And then this one would be 
error server.services. And then when we call it again, well, what we want to do is actually create a new table under services with the name of that folder. So maybe something like this, and then services table child.name equals table, and then pass the table in. There we go. And so what that's going to allow us to do is uh, create a, like a, a chain of tables by name of the folder. Um, so in, again, in order to demonstrate that, if we had our nested folders here, test, and then maybe ABC, and then a module script called module. All right, and let's call it, uh, I don't know, Corey. Uh, what this means is if we were in our fade module, for instance, and we wanted to access QWERTY, we could then do so. Well, this is a controllers, so it's a little different than our services, but it, it, with the same logic, what we would do is self.controllers, and then we could use dot notation into it, test.abc.qwerty. So again, it's injecting these tables into it uh, based on the folder names. Okay. Again, I'm not going to keep these things because Roho will just delete it <laughs> uh, since it's not existing here. Okay. So that should do the services, I think. Now, again, there's the one other aspect that I was talking about in terms of whether or not you should be able to reference uh, the uh, parent. I, I feel like actually I want to leave that out and uh, if, if I did want to add it it would be pretty simple it'd be pretty straightforward uh, it, because we're injecting things here right so for instance we are injecting a client table if that's not there um, otherwise things are through the, the meta table here but we could also inject uh, like a parent so we do a service dot parent equals services table uh, but again, I, I, I hesitate toward injecting new things, um, especially something as commonly named as parents, uh, considering there's probably existing code out there that's using that um, within their services or modules or whatever. I don't want to override that information. So yeah, I, I think for now I want to leave that out and uh, through some testing maybe we'll we can see if that's uh, something that we want to add in or not. Or maybe there's a better solution to it overall, I don't know. So, what we should do is test this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is create some service modules here. So under server storage modules, oh no, we want under services. These are the two existing ones here, so if we go here, so what we're looking for and uh, let's create a folder called test make another folder called abc and then create a service under here called test service.lua We will print out to make sure that we are getting to these steps. And of course I need to set this up properly. Okay. So just really quick, let's make sure that came in. All right. Yep. We see that and if we run it uh, we should see it print out that we're starting and we don't so error server 125 index of nil value so we did something wrong so 125 <clears throat> we have this all right so our services table has come back nil is that right attempt to index a nil value so yes 
basically it's trying to index, this is when we're indexing, right, with these brackets. So if we're indexing against this, then that error means that this is nil for some reason. Um, so we go back down to here. Oh, yeah, well, when we call load service, we should pass in our parameter, so, like so. And I run it again. Okay, that's taking a suspiciously long time. Yep, okay, it will cut something. So we have a stack overflow, great, okay. That's fantastic. So 119 is where it caught that. It's load all services, so our recursive function is stuck. That's not good, okay. Oh, well, yeah, that's dumb. So what I did right here is we're loading all services and we're cursing through the same parent again. <laughs> that is a rookie mistake right there. So that should be child right there. All right. <laughs> a lot of errors on this one. All right, 149. Table expected to got nil. Better argument number one, 149. Service.client. Okay, so when we're, init, we're initiating services, uh, this assumes that these are all, uh, well, no, we're scanning through it probably down here. Yeah, okay. So we need to make these recursive as well. <clears throat> And this is why you test often. You don't want to write all your code and then find out everything's broken and have to fix it all. So again, I kind of figured this would end up being a little more involved than I thought it was originally. Um, it is, but we'll get there. So get all services. you have to do a type of, so if type of, <clears throat> I guess type is the one button, if type service is equal to, oh, this is complicated. I can't check for a table, right? Because when I just check for table, um, the problem with that is they're both tables. <laughs> um, so that makes it a little more complicated. So, how can we do this? We could check for, okay, there's two ways we could do this. One, we could make this more robust and we could just check if like the meta table is equal to empty, uh, which is probably what I'm gonna do since every service will have that meta table inside. Um, otherwise, what we could do is add another temporary table to collect all of the services and just scan through that. Um, so we can assume all these are gonna be tables. So perhaps instead if get meta table service is equal to NT, then in it, else we you know it's a nested table and so we wanna call that one service. Okay, now this is a little dangerous code um, because we're assuming some things. Again, right now we're assuming that the type is always a table. And um, again, this is why I like type languages more than anything because you could do something like this and have an explicit understanding that it is a table because arrays would have an explicit type. Uh, in this case, Lua, it's not. So just because of how we've programmed this, I know that it's going to be a table, but uh, that's not always nice. So in a type of language, this would be fine. Lua, it's a little dangerous, but again, we're gonna roll with it for now. 
because um, we know everything is going to be a table. <clears throat> so again, if we get the meta table of <clears throat> the table here, and it matches the meta table that we're assigning all the surfaces, then we know it is a surface. So we can initiate it. Otherwise, we have one of those nested folders, and we need to scan through that table instead. <clears throat> okay. So that should work, and I'm going to try it again, and it should uh, fail here on the start sequence. But we should get an init message at least. Oh, okay, it worked. Um, and scary enough, it did not fail here, and that's probably because it's not trying to access anything directly, it's just checking if it has a start function. Yep, okay. So we're going to copy this code because it's essentially the exact same thing for starting. And uh, that should do it. Did I miss anything? Nope, okay. Let's go back to here, run it, and uh, we've started it, okay, cool. So now what we need to do is make sure that we're, we can reference it fine. So we're gonna do it both ways. So first we're gonna make another service. We're gonna call it um, another service. <laughs> Real creative, huh? And uh, just to make sure we can access it, we're gonna just add a favorite number. So favorite number is self.services, and now we can do dot notation through the folders. So test.abc.testService.favorite number, and then let's print it out. All right, moment of truth. Let's make sure that works. It did, awesome. Okay, now let's make sure that the test service works fine. So we are going to go from another service, which is the top level, and we're gonna just um, add a message and make sure we can reference it here. So we're gonna print out message And then we're gonna do self dot controllers and then services dot another service dot message. Let's make sure everything was like injected fine and everything. Message. Yep, it worked. Okay, so that's good. Now again, we're coming at this crossroads. So let's imagine we have another service here. Um, looks like Z service. Whatever. Uh, again, the uh, extension for uh, this framework will give you this code automatically. I had to write here because I'm just writing within the core framework code to test. So I'm going to delete all this. Really, I should be, I can't believe I'm doing this on the master branch. This should really be on a different branch. But uh, here we are. So starting, knitting. So the question is, if we're in XYZ service and we want to access test service, currently what we have to do is go all the way through from the top. So if we want to reference it, for instance, it'd be self.services.test.abc.testService. So even though it is within the same folder, we need to start from the top and work down. Now what I've been trying to contemplate is, should I be able to, instead of doing that, why can I not just do service? Now, the reason I feel hesitant about this again is twofold. First of all, uh, injecting anything into the framework is dangerous at this point in the life cycle because uh, it's possible people have defined this within their modules or controllers or whatever. And so I don't want the framework overwriting this or other people overwriting this. Implicit uh, injections of things like this are just kind of risky all the time. 
So uh, I feel hesitant because of that, but also I feel hesitant uh, because it's also implicit as to where this parent lives. So from this code, we know explicitly that this is a service because we're accessing the services part here and we're going all the way down to our actual module. So I know it's a service. However, here, self.parent.testService, I mean, I know it because I named it test service, but if I didn't name it that, I may have something else. It's uh, hard to tell from this code, you know, what what is that? Uh, is it a service? Is it a module? What is it? Um, it's hard to tell. Again, this is kind of a kind of a annoying part of having a dynamic language here, is that we just don't have that type definition stuff here um, to understand the context. So I yeah I feel hesitant for the for those reasons. Um, however, I I still feel like I would like to have something like this a shortcut. Um, so. I don't want it to be named parent, but parent makes the most sense. Now we could do kind of an underscore sort of thing. So if you're familiar with using this framework a lot, you'll know that there are some flags that you can set per module that are double underscore uh, sort of things. And what you'll see those in the modules and stuff. I'm trying to find an example here. Yeah, right here. So if you define underscore underscore arrow prevent init or arrow prevent start, then it will not call the init or start functions on that function. And uh, this is helpful if you have pre-built modules that you're you're making or you're trying to throw into the framework that already have those defined and you want to use them. Um, if you add those flags, then it just won't call those functions. So that's kind of the benefit of doing that. Yep, okay. So we could do something like that where we add an optional flag. And not necessarily an optional flag, but um, kind of a, a hidden value like that. So it would be uh, something like, yeah, for example, here, if you see this, so self dot under underscore underscore parent that test service. It's not pretty. Um, but it would do the trick. Again, I just want to avoid using uppercase parent like that since that's probably going to be used elsewhere in the existing code. And I don't want to override that information. Okay. So let's just play around with it then, see what works. Another problem though with it is if uh, we wanted to go up more. So if we do self dot parent dot parent. Now the trick with that means that we have to add a parent reference into our nested folder tables as well. So that causes some problems too. I mean it's easy to do. So we're creating it right here, right? So we could just do table dot parent equals services table. That would be fine. Um, So we could do that, but really, yeah, we need to come up with a naming convention for this. It's going to work. Again, I don't want to use capital P parent. But maybe just a single underscore. That's what we're using for other internal things, such as uh, events, client events, remote folder. <clears throat> so maybe it could just be one of those, like, not necessarily a hidden feature, but like uh, an optional, like, this is more of an internal thing. Uh, but you could use it if you want. Again, I feel hesitant by that because it's not an internal thing. It's not being used by anything internally <clears throat> like these are. So that's kind of misleading. So perhaps this could just be, it just shouldn't be any, I don't know. I feel like it just shouldn't be there. Or, you know, let's just, we'll, we'll keep it like that for now. And, uh, We'll see how that works going forward. Just as we're testing here. So we need to add that up here too. Make 
sure that we can reference it properly. So that's not good. Uh, 199. Huh. Oh, because because we're injecting parent, now it's trying to scan through the parent too, and so it ends up uh, scanning over itself again. See, this is it's kind of what I was worried about. We're just having a whole bunch of side effects adding this parent here. Yeah, I'm not adding it. I'm gonna kill it. Okay. So just get rid of that. Um, it really felt like an anti-practice to begin with. I think it is an anti-practice. So this should be the preferred way, even though it's wordy. It's more explicit, you know what you're accessing. That's fine. If anyone has a suggestion for how to do that better, let me know. Yep, okay, so we can reference it just fine through that. So that continues to be fine. Okay, so that's services. Now it should be relatively simple kind of copy and paste to apply that to uh, modules and also for the client stuff as well. So for the modules, these are lazy loaded. Oh, so that might be a little tricky, right? So you index it <clears throat> and right now it is just assuming you've indexed a module script. I, I assume. Yep. Okay, so this is called, this function is called on both the modules, right? right here and also on shared right here so if we think about this right now the, the way this is working we're, we're throwing a meta table on it so if we index uh, this table which I believe is just blank what would we give it yeah I mean it's the modules and shared folder which are initiated as, as nothing so if we start there, then what we have is um, just a really simple way to kind of fake lazy loading. I mean, it's lazy loaded in, in terms of uh, not requiring the module and thus using that memory. The, the object, the module script itself obviously still exists there. But we don't actually load it until we first access it the first time. So this index function does, it captures that. So if we do, you know, modules dot, um, I don't have any modules here that are on the root, but well, I guess the data store cache is one. So modules .data store cache. Um, if I have not accessed that ever before, it will run this code. So it will require the module. Again, it just assumes that what you call it is a module. And it does that because it, in that case, it should error if it wasn't a module. We want that to error. So we require it. We check to make sure that that module is a table. So it's proper for this. And if so, we call this wrap module function which just does some meta table setup for it. And then we raw set that to uh, this table so that next time we access it, it doesn't hit this anymore. It just goes right to the module itself. And raw set's not really necessary here because we don't have a new index meta method, but whatever, it's there. So how do we transform this then to allow sub modules? One way to do it is where we're calling lazy load setup. We could just scan through uh, the folder there and call lazy load setup on every folder. And in fact, I think that would be the simplest way. And uh, well, no, because 
is going to go directly into the table then. So I'm not entirely sure what the best method for that is. Hmm. How should this work? So if we have this required here, again, we're just assuming it's the top, but if I do something like self.modules.nested.abc.mymodule, and this code right here is gonna just pick up on nested. First of all, it's gonna try to resolve that. And uh, if it's just a folder, well, it's just gonna error out here. And so it's, it's gonna fail right away. But what we wanted to do is, if it is a table, or sorry, if this is a folder, we want to load it in as a table, and then call this lazy load setup on itself, and then return that, and then then you'd have a table returned instead. Um, and then it would go down the chain like that. Okay, so I'm gonna change this a little bit. So instead of this, we need to check that child. Again, we're assuming it exists by indexing it directly like that. So if you pass in an index that just doesn't exist within the hierarchy, it will error. That's fine, that's what we want it to do. That's why we're not using find first child because that will uh, silently fail in that, in that instance. We want a failure if it doesn't exist. So get the child if it is a table. No, 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 it's, we're not requiring it yet. So if child is a module script, then load it in. Else if child is a folder, then that's when we want to dive into their deeper. So in this case, we want this information. So require it as a child or as a module. Uh, wrap it with the meta methods and stuff, and then return it. If it is a folder though, what we want to do is create a new table, to reference it, and we're going to end up returning that table. But we're going to call lazy load setup on it too. Ah, we're having a problem. This, this is a uh, Shadowing that. Just call it that instead. See, Lizzy load setup and our table is nested table and our folder is child. And we still want to add this. We'll do it first. Like so. So now, if we work through this, self.modules will access this top level modules, and that's done because of the meta table already set, so it, it hits that. When you hit not dot nested, what it does is it checks the, the child first, so it, it tries to get the child name nested from the modules folder. Um, if it is a module script, then it loads it. In this case, it's not, it's a folder, right? So it's a folder. We create a table to kind of reference it. Um, we add it into our kind of virtual hierarchy here, and then we call lazy load setup on that child within that table. So now, if we access dot nested, and we try to act, and we try to index that, uh, we'll run the same code again. So we'll get a child from folder, which in this case was the child we passed to it, um, which is nested and we can keep on going down and down to the module script. Okay, so let's test this out. Um, an easy way to do this is to do what we did before with the services. 
So we're going to create some nested stuff. Now don't be uh, confused by this too, though. Um, the, while these are folders within the uh, Visual Studio Code environment, they get resolved into just normal scripts because it's like it has these init files here, so that it's a little misleading from this view. So we're going to follow what I wrote in the comment at the top on 103. So net tested, no, no, not tested, nested, and then APC, and then my module. So by default, just make sure that it loaded it in here. Yep, um, it should not run, it should not say started or whatever because it is a lazy loaded module. But if we go to one of our services and try to access it, it should load. So if we go back to XYZ service, for instance, and in our start method, we could say local my module equals self.modules dot test you know, dot nested dot abc dot my module and if that works then my module should be loaded and when that happens uh, because it's uh, loaded into the framework it should call this function right here start and print that out so run it and it worked started my module okay so that's cool, that worked. Okay. So that's kind of the structure we'll do with the lazy loading. So that's nice. So basically our code here for lazy loading stays the same. And we just do the kind of uh, recursive nature of this function uh, on the fly. So that works pretty well. So now that that's all working, I'm going to get rid of this code. Again, it's on the repository history, so if I need it, I can go back to that. So now I want to implement this for the client, which should be pretty straightforward. It's gonna be pretty much the same code uh, client side. So yeah, you can already tell it, it looks pretty much exactly the same. So I'm just going to do that. Um, but I'll, I'll just stop this here because uh, this has been long and it's, again, it's gonna be like the same code. So that's kind of my implementation of folders. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of testing on it, of course, to make sure there's uh, n no kind of hidden side effects that are happening or anything of that nature uh, before I actually check this in.